how do we find the right talent for the supply chain? Ben Shrewsbury heads up the Global Operations and Supply Chain Officers Practice of Russell Reynolds Associates. Hi, Ben. Hey, Bob. Thanks so much for having me join you today. Looking forward yeah. to the conversation. And thank you for taking the time. So uh, we're looking about, we're talking about finding talent. We're talking about human capital and the supply chain. Just to start out, what is top of mind for supply chain leaders today? What challenges are executives facing in the C-suite and at the board level? Well, there are a number of them. And as I'm sure you're, you're aware and, and folks who um, do your podcast are aware, supply chain is absolutely in the zeitgeist. Oh, yeah. um, and I would say there are a number of uh, trends that have impacted of late related to this tension be between speed, cost to serve, um, against flexibility and resilience as being critical differentiators, um, surety of supply, risk management, and, and really supply chain disruption. So mm -hmm. if you think about the, the complex connected global economy that we still enjoy has been stressed um, with some of the circumstances of the last um, 20 months or so. And um, those challenges related to uh, Again, surety of supply, uh, visibility, uh, access to labor, and ultimately um, meeting unique uh, and evolving consumer demand have made it a, a very exciting place to be um, a, a leader, especially, you, especially today. Do you think that these, the events of the last year or so are making boards of directors more cognizant of the importance of supply chains to the success of businesses? 100%. Um, we have conversations regularly and increased conversations with our clients across industries around the world about the importance and the impact of, of supply chain and operations. And in some cases, we've been a part of partnering with those clients on helping them to evaluate their board capabilities and bringing in specific um, capability related to supply chain to the, to the boardroom um, yeah. as a uh, in many respects, uh, looking for diversity of perspective, for that matter, might might be a, uh, a consumer uh, durable who brings in industrial manufacturing from a from that kind of perspective, um, or a technology player who brings in um, CPG. So it's uh, absolutely a conversation that is happening in the boardroom and a conversation we're having with our clients. It's almost a maybe a case of be careful what you wish for among <laughs> supply chain executives who used to complain that nobody cared or knew about what they did. Now everybody does, and maybe for them, there's just that much more, that many more eyes on them and, and, and their I, responsibility, right? Absolutely. I tell you the conversations that we have with um, both clients and, and the market from a candidate standpoint, they're some of the hardest working, hardest working folks in, in, um, in business right now. Yeah. So let's drill down to the actual workplace and talk about some of the major trends there. I mean, just how work is being done in the supply chain, the extent to which remote work is still possible and uh, how the pandemic has affected it, how that concerns supply chain today. What are the big issues there? Look, I, I think that um, as you might agree and maybe some of your other guests have shared, there is pre-pandemic and post-pandemic and never, never the twain shall meet. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> Before and after. You know, before and after, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And and there has been a shift um, in terms of this notion of remote work. Um, I would say that within um, ops and supply chain, you still cannot get away from presence, physical presence, being on site. Um, and in some respects, um, if you were to go down within an organization, manufacturing, plant leaders, et cetera, um, are always going to be a part of um uh, that location, their teams. Uh, I will tell you that um, in the C-suite and senior roles within ops and supply chain, um, they remain road warriors to the extent that um, yeah. they're, they're able to travel. So um, I don't think that is going to change um, fundamentally, but what there will be receptivity to is um, being where you need to be when you need to be there, as opposed to potentially mm -hmm. being at the flagpole, being aligned with headquarters as a senior leader. Um, and at the end of the day, it's really about having the most impact that you can, especially within a distributed manufacturing environment. Um, and we have a lot of our clients who are very much open to senior leadership who might not necessarily be in the same city where, um, where they are headquartered and just expect them to be, again, mm -hmm. um, a, a function member of the executive team and, and ultimately uh, on site as needed. 
well, in addition to the necessity of being there on the manufacturing and distribution floor, as you point out, it's Absolutely. hard to imagine carrying out the procurement function from thousands of miles away. I mean, you occasionally have to go see your suppliers, inspect their factories. I mean, there's, you need people on the ground for that, right? Absolutely. And um, so, again, I, I don't think that that will that that need that dynamic is going to change fundamentally. Mm -hmm. It's more about the flexibility, actually, that I would say in terms of the way that we work and, and the receptivity to it. You know, one of the things that we've talked about with, with our clients um, and even have garnered from the market is this, this notion of um, a winning formula to take care of people who ultimately take care of the business and focus on things like authenticity, empathy mm. from senior leaders to really um, take into consideration what the folks who do the hard work um, are experiencing and adjusting to those operating models to be able to inspire teams in remote working conditions. It's, it's going to be part of the new normal. Um, and it's certainly elevated expectations and, and the kind of skill sets and leadership traits that, that we expect from senior supply chain leaders. Yeah. You're talking about some really important soft skills. That soft are hard, skills are harder to measure, but absolutely essential, right? <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Let's broaden the discussion a little bit about the impact of human capital generally on big issues in global supply chain, sustainability, resilience. I mean, where does that come into the discussion? What can be done in order to link those two things successfully? Well, that's another conversation that, that we're having with our clients in, in the boardroom and the C-suite is about this notion of sustainability, mm -hmm. um, both environmental and, and social impact. Um, whether it's uh, ways in which they're considering the, the the notion of ESG and how it fits into their their strategy, environmental um, social governance. Correct, mm -hmm. correct. Thank you. Um, and really elevating that as important, and and it's inextricably linked, I would say, to the supply chain, especially in organizations that have a make profile where they're actually manufacturing something. Um, so the conversations around sustainability, absolutely. Um, the notion of resilience as well, and the expectation that um, within these global value chains, uh, you're going to still take care of folks who are in different parts of the world, have an expectation and a duty of care for what happens at those facilities where ultimately yeah. are part of your supply chain. The assumption, of course, is you have visibility of that, that you can see it. And that seems to be a big challenge just to get that for in a, a multi-tier supply chain. That's, that is absolutely true. And, and one of the things that we're seeing is the investment in that capability because the public demands it, um, mm -hmm. investors demand it, um, and it's in enhancing those kinds of capabilities, uh, investing in, in people who might be co-located on the ground. Uh, that, is, that is a trend that is occurring across a number of companies that we partner with. So we've been talking about people stuff so far. But I'm wondering what, what is the possible role of technology in all this, specifically in terms of things like advanced analytics and artificial intelligence? How might that impact human capital in the supply chain? How can it improve the whole process? Well, I think as we've noted and seen in cases where there have been shortages or um, acute disruptions that might actually um, be a function of labor, uh, technology and automation, and the ability to, to leverage analytics to make smart decisions has helped ensure enhanced productivity. Um, mm -hmm. Going forward, uh, the, the two are um, uh, connected in a way that will not see a separation. So um, I think as you, as you look at and you think about the skill sets that our clients are demanding from their senior executives, uh, the ability to em embrace data-driven analytics and have full value chain visibility in a way that, that hasn't been seen before, really trying to develop what is a, a demand-driven value chain. And the mm -hmm. technology-enabled leader who's operated in and deployed enterprise platforms that is going to enable that supply and demand visibility will be a real differentiator. So technology, obviously, is not always the solution, but is certainly a force multiplier um, and is changing the way we work and the way in which uh, the profile of a senior executive within supply chain is, is presumed to be in terms of their capabilities. And that term, enhanced productivity, not a code phrase for getting rid of people altogether. Right. No, I mean, that, we find a way all. to technology to enable human capital, not replace it. Exactly. Enhance productivity in a way that ultimately will continue to um, drive value within their organizations mm -hmm. and, and meet consumer demands. Um, yeah. That is what our clients are focused on. And of course, go all the way up, as you say, to the C-suite, the boardroom, 
the stock market, the investors, company value is so tied up to in human capital today. I guess that's our takeaway message, right? In supply chain. That's absolutely correct. Yeah. It is that the connection between technology people and, and what's expected of senior leaders in supply chain and really it's strategic impact as a strategic enabler um, is, is evolving and uh, will continue to be uh, front and center. Hey, Ben Shrewsbury of Russell Reynolds Associates. Thanks for taking these few minutes with me to kind of outline some of the big concerns for supply chain leadership today going forward. Thanks so much for being with me. It was, it was a real pleasure, Bob. Thank you. Appreciate it.